if there were any lessons, principles, um, things people could learn from all the data, all the things you've researched, all the situations you've seen in your work, I know there's a lot of them. Um, is there any lessons for the individual that they can take into their life? Like um, any, any things that they can do or change based on what you've seen and, and how, how you've seen the world? Ah, oh, that's a big question. One thing, and and we didn't discover this finding, but our our continued measurement always reveals this as a, a priority need or a top predictor of well-being is connection, is relationships. So, you know, we are um we are social beings and we need that to thrive so I think the importance of investing in our personal relationships um, that has come through um, and that's certainly been the thing that sustained me and kept me going over the last 10 years of embarking on this journey with Huba so yeah I think that's that's a key finding um, it's uh, it's a hard one I don't it's really at the moment, all our projects are like sector by sector or or project by project, really. And it was just this morning that we've just looked at how much data we collected in the last 12 months alone and we've measured the well-being of 9,000 people across four countries. And we haven't put that all together because, you know, there's reasons why you wouldn't. That might not necessarily um, reflect a very balanced sample, even if you just look at the data in Australia. However, saying that, I'm like, please can we do that? Because I want to see if there are findings that, that emerge. Um, and then probably just the final lesson or or insight that we've distilled is um, if I simplify it from like more remote communities versus like Western developed com- um, communities and sectors, some of the factors that always emerge as really high, um, regardless of their circumstances, uh, there's two is I like who I am and my life is important. So we don't see that in, say, um, in Western developed sectors, but we see that in more remote communities and um, I hate using the word, but undeveloped communities mm. as well in the global south. So I think, like, that's just that's just remarkable and like what yeah that we've at the moment kind of mainstream society it's something that's really suffering is our self-belief and our self-love um and so I don't really have the answer to that but they're the kind of findings and insights that we've drawn out that yeah definitely food for thought and and make us pause and reflect um and and start to address that I like those two questions. Do I, is it, do I like myself? Yeah, it's like, well, it's on a scale. So we ask the question, I like who I am and yep. my, um, my life is important. And then people rate it out of one to seven. Mm. So we first started asking that in the community in Northern Uganda and we just couldn't believe it. You know, everything that's going on, those two always report high. And then we've seen that come through other communities as well. Um, yeah, I just think that's so powerful as a statement um and and it's you know from their point of view they're like yeah of course like why wouldn't you why Mm. why like they think they're kind of silly questions as my life is important of course it is like whereas um I think it's something we struggle a lot more with in a western society Mm. it feels like that might be it what was that sorry sorry with what we're exposed to you know where we're always comparing and and everything else so mm. maybe that's a powerful two questions to ask like you write it yourself write down and then yeah. then start to uncover what it is like what what don't I like about myself because we all don't like things about ourselves it's like great well, how can I put them in order you know or how can I l- let go of order sometimes so I think that's uh two really mm. powerful things there 